So as our custom is, we're going to pray. We're going to ask for the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us as we study the Word of God this morning. Okay? I will kneel and you all pray within your heart. Father in heaven, we are so grateful for Jesus. We ask that you'll speak through the word by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I really like that, uh, that special music, the signs of the times. That's really nice. And, you know, I was going to put some pictures up here, you know, what happened, the, the aftermath of the hurricanes and the tsunamis, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but that, that is so easy. We, we know that these are signs of the times, crystal clear. And, uh, you know, as, as a people, we know how it's going to go down in the last days. Isn't that right? Yeah. We know what's going to transpire. We know about the seal of God, the mark of the beast, the latter rain, et cetera, et cetera. And we want to experience all these things. And we definitely need to experience having victory, victory over sin. No one heard what I said. I said we need to experience having victory over sin. Man, what, you want to keep on sinning or something? No, we don't want to do that. We want to have victory through the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, with that said, I believe that what we eat can aid us in having victory over our shortcomings or sins. I believe that. Now, what you eat does not give you a ticket to the kingdom. You can eat all the broccoli and tofu all you like and come up in the second resurrection. But what we do eat, you know, it gives nourishment to the blood, you know, and the blood is life, and it makes you think better, have a clearer mind. Ellen White says, I, I don't have the exact quote by memory, it's in my computer, uh, but she says basically those who are preparing for the second coming uh, will eventually cease from eating meat. She says that. Uh, that means the 144,000 we are striving to be a part of, not one in that number will be consuming chicken or steak or any form of meat or fish. Now, some of you, you're not going to like this message this morning. But I got to give it to you like the word gives it. <laughs> because God is not playing. Now, a lot of times we cat categorize sins. We have like big sins, small sins, medium sins. Now, I was, I was here yesterday in this community uh, down, you know, the, the apartment complex across from the middle school there. And I was just knocking doors, giving out glow tracks, playing, praying for some people. I just like doing that. There's something about sharing what you believe to others that's just, you can't really explain it. There's a power there. And I was talking to someone and uh, this gentleman, and I said, hey, you know, I'm a minister of that church right there on the corner of Ninth and Olive. I just want to ask you a question. Do you believe that Jesus is coming soon? He said, well, that's not really for me to say because Jesus can come in 20 years. That, this is what he said, though, that really caught, that really made me think. He says, you know, what's most important is I can die today. We don't know what day will be our last. Isn't that right? That's why moment by moment is most important. And I agreed with him. And that is why we need as much advantage over the enemy as possible. And if diet helps me to gain victory, I need to know about that. I need to know that. Sodom. When you think about Sodom, what is the first thing, the first sin that comes to your mind? Yeah, this common sense, right? I'm going to say Sodom, Sodom, sodomy, homosexuality. Let's go to Ezekiel 16. Let's go to Ezekiel 16 here. Let's go to Ezekiel. <clears throat> Ezekiel 16 to begin. I want to show you something in the Bible. When we think of Sodom, we think of sodomy or homosexuality. Jesus says, before he returns, this world will be just like it was during the time of who? Sodom and Gomorrah, and he mentions Lot. And we know Lot was there in Sodom, okay? So God says, Leviticus, uh, sorry, Ezekiel 16, are you there? The Bible says in Ezekiel 16, go to verse 48. Go to verse 48. Go to verse 48. <clears throat> 
<clears throat> now I'm going to ask you something, and I just want to answer. You know, we like to eat. Isn't that right? I like to eat. You can't lie. <laughs> uh, we like eating. Now, is uh, overeating a gluttony, is that a sin, yes or no? Yeah. The Bible says in Ezekiel 16, verse 47, verse 48, verse 48 says, As I live, says the Lord God, neither your sister Sodom nor her daughters have done as you and your daughters have done. Look, this is the iniquity of your sister Sodom. She and her daughter had pride, fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. Verse 50 says, And they were haughty and committed abomination before me. Therefore I took them away as I saw fit. Wow. God is speaking to Israel, his people. He calls Sodom their sister. And God uh, mentions the sins of Sodom. And one of the sins of Sodom, he says, fullness of bread, the King James, or fullness of food. In other words, one of their sins was overeating. A lot of times we don't focus on that one. Do you know how powerful that is? Because we categorize sins, well, the homosexual, that's bad. And that's, that's true. What about gluttony? You can be a sodomite and never commit homosexuality. The Bible says they had pride. If you are prideful about anything, you are a sodomite. If you are overindulging in food, I don't care if it's tofu and broccoli, you can overindulge in broccoli. You are a sodomite. I am a sodomite. And what, what's so interesting to me, God lists the sins of Sodom in Ezekiel 16, and he never mentions once homosexuality. Because God is showing the reader it is much deeper, as Jesus says, as it was during the time of Lot, it's going to be like that when the Son of Man is revealed. It's more, because we will think, well, I'm not homosexual, so I'm all right. But if you are prideful, you're not all right. If Alvin Mirage is a glutton, I am not all right. The Bible says, go to the screen, the Bible says, For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies. Now watch who are the enemies of Christ. The enemies of the cross of Christ whose end is destruction, whose God is there. What's that word right there? The Bible says the enemy of Christ, one of the enemies, it doesn't say homosexuality, it doesn't say murderers. Hey, you just eat too much. The God, the belly is a God. That belly says, I want this and this and this. And no matter what this pen of inspiration says, we still go against her counsel. And we still eat what's forbidden for, uh, in the Bible and in the spirit of prophecy. Because the spirit of prophecy is the, is the words of Christ. Because the same Holy Ghost that inspired Ellen White is the same Holy Ghost who inspired Paul to write this. Same Holy Spirit. And the wife says we shouldn't eat certain, certain things, and we still do it. That God, we bow down to that belly all the time. The Bible says, the righteous eats to the satisfying of his or her own soul. In other words, the Bible gives counsel. You know, Solomon was wise. He says, when you're eating food, when Alvin is eating, when I am satisfied, I stop. We went out to eat for my wife's birthday uh, Thursday with, with Dr. Ziggy and Jane. They took, took us out for her, for her birthday. When I, was, I, I got there hungry, but when I was satisfied, I stopped. That's what the Bible says. Because gluttony is a sin. <laughs> the Bible goes on to say, when you sit down to eat with a ruler, consider carefully what is before you. And put a knife to your throat if you are a man given to appetite. Wow. Solomon says you might as well put a knife there, a sharp knife, and just go from one ear to the next. <laughs> what? He says put a knife to your throat if you are a glutton. But we focus on so many other sins. Not today, brothers and sisters. Mm, not today. 
Let's go to Daniel chapter 1. Let's go to Daniel chapter 1. Daniel chapter 1, as we study, because we need victory over sin. If we want to be a part of the 144,000. Mm-hmm. In Daniel chapter 1, now let's pay uh, close attention to God. Very interesting. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 1, uh, verse 4, are you there? The Bible says, young men in whom there was no blemish but good looking, gifted in all wisdom, possessing knowledge and quick to understand, who had ability to serve in the king's palace and whom they might teach uh, the language and uh, literature of the Chaldeans. So these guys, Daniel and his three friends, they were taught education, Babylonian education. That's the mental. Okay? Bible goes on to say in verse 5, And the king appointed for them a daily provision of the king's delicacies and of the wine which he drank, and three years of training for them, so that at the end of that time they might serve before the king. That's food. That's on the physical level. So you have, they were taught. That's mental. Then you have, they had, they had food. That's physical. Then the Bible goes on to say in verse 6, Now from among those of the sons of Judah were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. To them the chief of the eunuchs gave names. He gave Daniel the name Belteshazzar. These are all Babylonian names. To Hananiah, Shadrach. To Mishael, Meshach. And to Azariah, Abednego. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Wow. The name, the names being changed, that, that's for a religious purpose, okay? That's on the religious level. So here we have, so we're all together. In Daniel chapter 1, we see that Daniel and his friends, they, re- they had Babylonian education. They had a Babylonian diet, and they had Babylonian names. But according to um, chapter 1 in Daniel, there was only one thing that they refused. What was that one thing? Did they cause a ruckus or uproar when it came to the Babylonian education? No, their education, their parents did such a good job, they were so solid in their education. No uproar there. What about the Babylonian names when their names were changed to Babylonian names? Was there an uproar? No, no. Daniel never said, oh, I don't want that name. He never protested. But when it came to that diet, the Bible says, Mm-mm, we're not going to partake in that. The Bible says in verse tw- 12, let's go to verse 12. Or Daniel says, please test your servants for 10 days and let them give us vegetables to eat and water to drink. Wow. The Bible says in verse 20, and in all matters of wisdom and understanding about which the king examined them, he found them how many times? Man, come on. This is awesome. 10 times better than all the magicians and astrologers who were in all his realm. Wow. The Bible says these four fellas, they were ten times better than everyone else in the kingdom for one reason, diet. They said, give us vegetables and water and we will be all right. Why do they reject this food, that chicken and tri-tip? You don't need any tri-tip. Uh, try, try spinach. Try broccoli. <laughs> try you don't need that stuff. They, oh, we don't want that. And they reject that wine, too. You know we have Adventists who drink wine? Yeah. I know some personally. Oh, well, it's good for the stomach. What? There's re- this just came out August 24th of this year. It says no amount of alcohol is good for your overall health, global study says. 
no amount. Yeah, we have Adventists who try to hide. Oh, it's just a wine cooler. Get out of here. Are you kidding? You know what alcohol does? Alcohol kills brain cells. Those brain cells do not come back. Hey, I need as much brain cells. I need as much help as possible. My wife will tell you. <laughs> I need help. I can't afford to drink alcohol. <laughs> it's so bad for you. They said, nah, we don't want that wine. We don't want that. Coffee is bad, too. You didn't hear what I just said. Coffee is bad. And it's against the will of God. I'm not going to say amen. I'll say amen for you. Amen. Oh, yeah, that stuff is bad. God doesn't want you to drink coffee or me or Pepsi, any of that stuff with caffeine. Here we have, this is why they, they say give us this right here. Wow. Isn't that beautiful? Give us those vegetables, and we will be ten times better. But why, why is this diet better than consuming meat? Ellen White says, the prophet of the Lord, there are those who ought to be awake to the danger of meat eating, who are still eating the flesh of animals, thus endangering the physical, mental, and what? See, what we eat affects our spiritual health. Brothers, look, look you, can be, you, you can be physically sick. You, you can be like in your bed paralyzed, and you can be saved. But if you are spiritual sick, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. Because the spirit, we can't afford to be spiritual sick, brothers and sisters. She says meat eating will contribute to that. Now, a lot of times when we think about meat eating, we think, you know, well, maybe like pig or pork or whatever. That's bad. What are some of the clean meats we're allowed to eat? Chicken, fish, goat, beef, cow. Okay, is that okay to eat? It's okay to eat. But you're supposed to eat those animals with all the blood extracted. And the fat. That's why there's such a thing called kosher meat. The Jews eat it. But these laws were given before there was one Jew on the planet. When you go to KFC and you get that two-piece, there's blood all in that chicken. And fat. Do you know the Bible teaches that you're not supposed to eat any meat, chicken, beef, fish with blood in it? A lot of times we think as Adventists that though these meats are clean and we are okay to eat them because God allowed. God allowed absence of blood. You're not hearing what I'm saying. Listen, listen to me very, very carefully, because I want to make it plain this morning. If Alvin Mirage, because I'm not going to say you, because you'll get mad. If Alvin Mirage goes to KFC tomorrow and order a two-piece with a biscuit, and I eat that two-piece, I am going against God's word. And that is a sin. You're not going to like the sermon. I already told you. I want to be clear. If you're going to eat steak after this sermon, you're in trouble. I'm not joking. If you eat chicken, because once knowledge comes, you have to respond. That's right. God winked at the knowledge, the ignorance. The Bible says in Acts 17, he winked at their ignorance. But now he calls all men to repent. When knowledge comes, you repent of That's sin. Right. So what the knowledge this morning is, because we're getting education. This is not condemnation. This is education. And so Daniel and his buddies, they had education on the proper diet. Adventists, we have education, but we don't follow it. It doesn't even make any sense. We have education, but we don't follow. When I was born again on fire for Jesus, I was consuming two-piece like every day. I didn't know better. <laughs> I thought because I just grew up in an Adventist home where, well, God says it's okay to eat chicken and fish and beef. It's okay. That's all I knew. But when knowledge came. And it's not because I'm afraid of hell. See, when you love Jesus, you do what he says. Love makes it easy. I love you, Jesus. You know what? I heard this preacher say once. I never forgot it. He said he was talking to someone, right? And this person was telling him 
he was doing the health method or health lecture or something. And this person after the meetings, you know, came up to him and had some questions. And they were like, hey, I, I can't give up this chicken. I just can't do it. And the preacher responded to the, to the person asking the question. Why are you so loyal to that chicken? What did that chicken do for you? <laughs> I never forgot that. <laughs> I mean, that makes so much sense. <laughs> I mean, how did the, the chicken never help pay your bills or anything? What did that chicken do? <laughs> I don't get it. Mm. So, brothers and sisters, we all need help. Just education here. But we got to make this thing plain this morning. God wants us to eat kosher meat. And you eat that kosher meat? I had kosher meat before. That stuff is like eating a leather belt. <laughs> you got to put a whole lot of seasoning on that stuff. <laughs> and so what we eat can affect our spiritual health. And she goes on to say, the control. now this is why they understood vegetables. The controlling power of appetite will prove the ruin of thousands. When, if they had conquered on this point, they would have had moral power to gain the victory over how many? Every other temptation of Satan. If we can control our appetites, we can have victory over every single temptation. No wonder Adam and Eve, they fell to appetite. Satan understands these folk fell to appetite. They weren't even hungry. They still fell. Satan comes to Jesus, first temptation, turn the stone into bread. Satan understands better than we do the power of eating. He knows if he can get these Adventists to be drunk on food, the mind is clouded. They can't think. Alvin can't have victory. Alvin is eating too much. So the question begs to be asked this morning. Hmm. What happens to the individual who cannot control his or her appetite? What happens to that person? Let's go to Numbers 11. Very sobering story. Numbers 11. Let's go there. Numbers chapter 11. Numbers chapter 11. Let's go there. Numbers chapter 11. All right. You know what I want to do? This is not in my notes, but keep your marker in Numbers 11. I guess the Holy Ghost is leading me here. Go to Genesis 9. Go to, I just want to show you a text that shows you we're not supposed to be eating blood that's an animal. Because somebody might be thinking, well, show me a Bible text. I'll show you one. Uh, Genesis chapter 9, let's go there. Are you there? Genesis 9, are you there? All right. The Bible says, Genesis 9 verse 1, So God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be on every beast of the earth, on every bird of the air, and on all that move on the earth, and on all the fish of the sea. They, now watch, they are given into your hand. Verse 3, every moving thing that lives shall be what? Food for you. So you can eat these animals. I have given you all things, even as the green herbs. Now watch verse 4. But, that's the conjunction. But you, Adventists, shall not eat flesh with its life. That is its what? Blood. See, life is in the blood. And that is why when you have a sickness and you go to the doctor, they do blood work. Because they can see disease in, through the blood. God says, that's why you have all this mad cow disease. Because the blood, that, that blood is still in the meat. And when you consume that meat, you turn mad. <laughs> there's no such thing as mad tofu or mad broccoli. Because there's no blood in that. God says very clearly, and in Genesis chapter 9, there is not one Jew. Amen. Abraham comes on the scene in Genesis chapter 12, the father of the Jews. So you can't say, well, that's applicable only to the Jews. No, it is not. That meat with that blood, never to be consumed. Amen. So from this Sabbath onward, when you have a 4th of July barbecue, you better barbecue some kosher steak. <laughs> oh, yeah, you better tell your guests before they come, too. <laughs> you better barbecue that steak, kosher. 
And the church said, Amen. And the church said, Amen. This, is God, this is God's word. This is God's word here. You can't argue what God says. Maybe you might not like what Alvin Mirage says, but with God. You know what I tell people all the time? If you get mad, mad with like a preacher, when the preacher is preaching the truth, your anger is always channeled to God. Because God is the one who wrote Genesis 9, not Alvin Mirage. So if you're angry at Alvin, oh, I'm not going to come back to that church. I don't like Alvin. I will smile and say happy Sabbath to you. Amen. Numbers chapter 11, let's go. Numbers chapter 11, let's go. <clears throat> because God wants us to have victory. Mm-hmm. Numbers 11, this is what happens to the person who cannot control the appetite. Numbers 11, are you there? The Bible says in verse 1, well, let's just skip to verse 4 for time's sake. Verse 4 says, now the mixed multitude, these were the Egyptians who came along with the children of Israel after um, li they were uh, liberated from bondage. Now the mixed multitude who were among them, the Israelites, yielded to intense craving. So the children of Israel also wept again and said, who will give us meat to eat? We need some chicken here. Verse 5, we remember the fish which we ate freely in Egypt. The cucumbers, that's good stuff. The melons, that's good stuff. The leeks, the onions, and the garlic, that's good stuff. But now our whole being is dried up. No, it's not. There is nothing at all except this manna before our eyes. Now the manna was like coriander seed and its color like the color of a bedlam. Let's just pause. The Bible says, this, this is, just blows my mind, church family. God will feed them. Bread will fall down from heaven. Can you imagine being fed by God? For the children of Israel, being fed by God was not enough. What? How is that possible? How can you be that ungrateful? Being fed by God is not enough? So he said, hey, because the mixed multitude, they started first. Because, you know, those folk in Egypt, they, they, don't have any, they don't have any standards. And so the children of Israel, they followed. Because by nature, you, the sinful nature is prone to wander, the, the song says. They say, hey, we want some more meat. God says, you want meat? Okay. Let's go to verse 13. Let's go to verse 13. When I am, where am I? This is Moses now. Where am I to get meat to give to all these people? It's like over 2 million of them. For they weep all over me saying, give us meat that we may eat. People are crying for, for, for steak. Let's go to verse 18. Interesting. Then you shall say to the people, this is God speaking to Moses, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow and you shall eat meat. Will you ask for it? I'm going to give it to you. You shall eat meat for you have wept in the hearing of the Lord saying, who will give us meat to eat? For it was well with us in where? Egypt. Egypt. Therefore, the Lord will give you meat and you shall eat. Pause. They located diet with location. They said it was okay with us when we were in Egypt. Because we had chicken and steak. It was okay. Egypt. You know what, a, what an Egyptian diet leads to? I was doing some research preparation for the study, and there was a study called <clears throat> the Horus Study. You ever heard of this? It took place, it came out in uh, April 2011. It's a very well-known study, and they studied some mummies to see how mummies in Egypt, what did they die of? Remember that study? And they had atherosclerosis is the thickening of the innermost layer of the arteries or the intima, which lead to heart attack and stroke. They found some of those mummies, they suffered from this, and they had blockages in their heart, those vessels. 
Here you have a topography image showing calcification of the left coronary, uh, coronary artery right here. These Egyptians, these mummies, many of them died because of heart disease. And you got a lot of Adventists who want to stay on an Egyptian diet. The children of Israel said, we had it good when we were in Egypt. And their goodness was based on what they ate. How do you have it good and you're a slave? But because food was so good and that meat with that blood in it was so tasty, these folk had heart attacks way back then in Egypt. This is interesting. Because you know the thing about research and science? You can't make that up. You can't make that up. <laughs> you just can't. This is why we have so many Adventists who are sick. We have a lot of Adventists who are just sick, heart attacks, or strokes, and all this. It's based on what we put in our temples. God says, okay, you want that meat? I'm going to give you some meat. Let's go to the next verse. Let's go to verse 31. Let's skip to verse 31. Watch what God does because these people were crying for steak and chicken. Verse 31 says, are you there? Now a wind went out from the Lord, and it brought quail from the sea. We're going to call that quail chicken. And left them fluttering near the camp about a day's journey on this side and about a day's journey on the other side, all around the camp and about two cubits above the surface of the ground. Let's pause right here before we continue. This is just fascinating. The people of Israel, they cry out to God, God, please, please, I need some chicken. We remember how it was in Egypt, that chicken, those two-piece, oh, yes, chicken. I need it. God says, okay, I'm going to send a wind. And the Bible says, these quails, these chickens came. And you see what it says, the distance, I love what it says here. It says two cubits. In the commentary, it says that's three and a half feet high. I'm about six, seven. So let's say all the quail, they flew to this level, this level right here. That means to get the quail, all you had to do was just snatch them out of the air. It wasn't you didn't have to jump. Every single person who wanted it, if you were a child, you can grab that chicken. So they're just, the, the chicken just flying everywhere, just grabbing, 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 killing, breaking the net, grab them, break the net, kill or kill, grabbing, grabbing, grabbing. Watch how much chicken they, 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 they gathered. Watch what it says in the next verse, verse 32. And the people stayed up all that night, all that day, then all night and all the next day for chicken. The whole day, the next day and night. Come on, brothers and sisters. You want meat that bad? They wanted meat that, then it says, watch what it says. And all the next, and gather the quail he who gathered, now watch, least gathered 10 homers and they spread them out from themselves all around the camp. You know, I read about this, the 10 homers. 10 homers were 62 bushels. And that was the least. What? That was the least. Hundreds of pounds of meat. You had all these bushels everywhere of dead birds. Crying out, God says, I'll give you what you want. You desire that? You can't control your appetite? I'll give it to you. Watch God. The Bible goes on to say in verse 33, in verse 33, but while the meat was still between their teeth, before it was chewed, the wrath of the Lord was aroused against the people. And the Lord struck the people with a very great plague. So he called the name of that place, Kibara, Habatha. Because there they buried the people who had yielded to craving. Wow. What? <laughs> These four were eating that chicken, and while that chicken was still in their teeth, boom, dropped dead all over the place. Just people just dead. 
all because of faith. They could not control the appetite. That's exactly why the Bible says, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly. The end for those Israelites in Numbers chapter 11 was destruction. Why? Because the belly became their God. I got to bow down to these cravings. I just can't help it. I have to have steak. I have to have chicken. I have to have goat. No, you don't. Who told you that? Who told you you have to? No one told you that. We need to have some, we need to have some practical education. I like being practical. I'm a practical guy. Let's just be practical because I need help. Practical application for overcoming overeating. Because this is what we need. Now, again, we do all of this because we love Jesus. It's all about love, love, love with Jesus. He loves us so much. You can eat fiber-rich foods. When you eat fiber-rich foods, you feel satisfied longer. So just eat more food with fiber if you're struggling with overeating, and this will help you. Number two, slow down. Eating too fast can cause overeating. You know, sometimes when we're hungry, it's, ah! no, no, just slow down, masticate your food, and you won't overeat. Get satisfied. Slow down. Number three, stress keeps, kicks up your cortisol levels into high gear, which promotes hunger and overeating. Well, if you're stressed out, you can go to the gym. I went to the gym yesterday. I go to the gym at least three times a week. Very, very good on stress. And you know, if you're a meat eater, you know, God, he works with people. My thing is, I would tell you all to stop eating meat today. Well, that was because it's against the Bible. Some people, they might have to, if they're eating meat seven days a week, you might have to they say, God, I need help. And they cut down to two times a week or something like that. You just wean yourself off slowly. Those are practical steps because God, he works with us. He works with us step by step. So we're all, that's, that's the process of sanctification, the process of making us holy. But with that said, though, that is no excuse to continue eating that meat. That's no excuse. That's what the Bible teaches. <laughs> but God will help us step by step. Hey, you might need go down to two days a week with that chicken and just continue asking God for help. God, I know this is not right. Eventually, those two days will go to you're not eating chicken at all. That's like, God, you're not eating it at all. You'll have victory over that thing. What should we hunger for? You know, talking about diet. You know, we should hunger for something. What should we hunger for? Oh, <laughs> the Bible says, <laughs> blessed are those who hunger and thirst for what? Righteousness. For they shall be filled. Wow. I'm done. The Bible says, what we should be hungering for is righteousness. You know what righteousness is? This is so simple. Righteousness is right doing, doing what's right. And what helps us do what's right is what we consume on that table. The Bible is clear. God wants all of us, including Pastor Alvin, to do better when it comes to diet. Because God wants our minds so clear that when he speaks, we will know that it's him. So brothers and sisters, I'm being honest, I want I want the seal of God right here. I want to receive the latter rain. I want to give a loud cry, Revelation 18. I want to experience every single thing God has. I want that. And that's going to come with a clear mind. All heads bowed and eyes closed. I just want us to be thinking. As, as we're praying, I want us to be thinking. You know, 
you might be here and you're struggling with eating meat. And you see from the presentation today that it is very, very clear that meat eating is not the best for my diet and my spiritual development. And you're just saying to God, Father, I need help from above to stop consuming flesh because it is not good for my spiritual development. It does not give me a ticket to heaven, but it makes my mind clear so I can hear from the Lord. But Lord, I'm really going to need help because what the Bible teaches not what Alvin said, but what I saw from the Bible this morning, it is very, very clear I cannot eat food with blood in it. It is clear. And if you need help having victory over diet, and you just want me to pray for you, raise your hand. Keep them up. You want to see what I'm praying for? Keep them up. Keep them up. You just need help. That's all. Keep them up. Hands down. Uh, we're still praying. My second appeal, you have strayed from God. You have backslidden. And God is calling you to come back to him today. The thing about Jesus, he won't reject you. He will accept you if you return to him today. If you have backslidden and you want me to pray for you, raise your hand. Keep them up. Hands down. Let's pray. Father in heaven, uh, we come to you on this beautiful Sabbath morning, thanking you so much for the past 30 minutes in your word. It does not take long for the Holy Ghost to convict a heart. Lord, I want to pray for those who raise their hands just being honest, saying, Lord Jesus, I need help. I'm going to need a lot of help to gain victory over meat eating. And I learned today, I don't stop eating meat because I'm afraid of hell fire. I stopped consuming meat because it's not good for my temple. I stopped consuming meat because I want my mind so clear that when God speaks, I will obey. And so, Lord, we see in the Bible, Daniel and his friends, they had the education that vegetables were better than meat. Lord, Adventists, we have had that education for over a century. But sometimes we don't follow it. Sometimes Alvin Mirage does not follow it. So we all need help to gain victory over gluttony that was part of Sodom. We need help in just so many facets of our life. And we, can, and we do know the Bible teaches we can do all things through Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, help your people. I pray for those who raise their hands, second appeal, saying I have strayed in some area in my life I have backslid. I pray, dear God, that as these individuals come back to you, I know that you will never ex uh, reject them, but you will accept them because you love people. And so, Lord, we have all been challenged this morning. And at the end of the day, every single person in this building, we need to hunger and thirst after righteousness. Because when we really, really want to do what's right, we'll do it through the power of the Holy Spirit. But we need that craving. We need that desire to truly live for Jesus because we love him so much. We just love Jesus so much. I want to live for you, Lord. That's it. Lord, help us. Lord Jesus, when you return the second time, I pray that all of us here will be part of the first resurrection or caught up in the air to meet you because we fell in love with you while living on this earth. 
time is coming to an end. That is common sense. Let us truly believe and act. Let us really act like we believe that. I pray that we'll be more fervent in our witnessing, that we will share with others, pass our glow tracks, give Bible studies, whatever form of witnessing, just do something. We have to be working because the time is going to come when no man can work. Lord, help us. We love you because you first loved us. In Jesus' name I pray, let every child of the king say, amen. Amen. We're going to make it, family. No one needs to be discouraged. Be encouraged. (laughs) You don't need to be discouraged. Be encouraged because God is still on the throne. Amen.